Can you please say welcome home to West Virginia? <laughs> welcome to Snowshoe in West Virginia. Me and Trace have made it stateside for the fifth round of the UCI Mercedes-Benz Downhill World Cup. And aren't we excited to be here? A double header ahead of us. Yeah, I am so excited. I can't believe we're back. Finally, we crossed the seas on an aeroplane and we are in America. <laughs> and it gets so exciting from here on out because there are three opportunities to collect points towards that overall. Something that you went through similarly yourself back in 2019. But of course, this double header element, it's an entirely new proposition this time around, right? Now the girls are coming into this race and they have three runs that are going to give them points. So I think don't know exactly how they're gonna attack it, but I think today and tomorrow we might see some real racing, just trying to clench as many points as possible. Yeah, no doubt. And it actually all starts today in women's qualification. Me and Trace are gonna be at the bottom seeing the girls as they cross the finish line and finding out their thoughts. Oh, Emily, how was your run? Um, it was average, to be honest. A um, few mistakes, it cost me time before the flat sections. I'm um, hoping to keep some more flow, but I rolled the triple at the end. It was just, just so. I didn't want to crash and miss qualifying. The attack date a few times, so, but I'll, I'll for sure send it tomorrow. I really like the, the jump part, it's pretty cool. The rock garden, it's hard, but it's cool too. What's key to managing that rock garden successfully? Because it's people are saying it's quite flat and there's not actually that much line choice. So how do you do it fast? Yeah, it's really flat. So you need to keep the speed everywhere. Don't touch the brake if you can. But yeah, we try to find the speed where, where we can. Valley, are you feeling a little bit better? Nice kind of safe run after your kind of rather large, terrifying crash yesterday. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on this season. I feel like life is testing my body. It's holding up, but it's definitely not fun. Yeah. I mean, it's good. Top three. It's fine. I didn't really pedal much because it was my first full run. Yesterday, I couldn't really ride after my crash, so I'm happy I made it down. And in third. Yeah. You're so hard on yourself. <laughs> Yummy! That's so amazing! Yeah, How I'm did stuck. you do it? I don't know, honestly, it didn't feel like it was so fast. I didn't jump that transfer, I didn't took that rocks and then a lift. So I wasn't expecting like such a good result, so it's amazing. Can I be honest? I, I actually, once I heard about the track and the style of track, I actually kind of put my money on you because really? I thought that this could be a track that you would do really well at. I mean, for sure, I like to pedal and you have to pedal a lot. <laughs> That's a good point, but otherwise you have to take a lot of risk as well and I'm not ready for it, so I'm just like went around. But yeah, no, I mean, for sure I lose a lot of time there, but I could manage to find some other somewhere else. So it's Miriam, you are not escaping us after that run by almost seven seconds. What? Where are you finding time up there? I think the secret is this little baby. <laughs> yeah, it's giving you so much confidence. Even the jumps, we thought maybe you were thinking about it a little bit. Did you conquer them after all? Yeah, yesterday morning I was struggling and I was like, I'm going around, I don't want to be injured. And then I was like, you're going to be pissed off, so go and do them. So yeah, pretty happy, but I'm exhausted, so I'll leave you for a spin. <laughs> wow, Miriam Nicole is just a rider, riding with complete confidence. You got the sense she really wanted that today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she has a point to prove to herself every run. And like I said, she's hungry for the points and she knows if she puts the hard work in at the start of the week, might take a little bit of the pressure off at the last round. No doubt. So your top three in women's qualification, starting with Miriam Nicole, Cami Blanche in second, and Valentina Hull taking the third spot. But it gets more exciting from here on out because the men's are up next. Stay with us. Els. You must remember 2019. Like, that was one of the most insane mountain bike races I think we've ever seen. That battle between Amory, Loic, Danny Hart. 
Are riders going to have some sort of preconceived notions coming back to Snowshoe? I mean, you would have to. That, the emotions that, you know, Amari and Loic and, and Danny felt in the finish corral, the up and down and the roller coaster, I think that would be burned into your mind for all time. Absolutely. And the overall, whilst Thibaut de Prela is kind of got himself a nice kind of head start, like technically Loris and Loic and even a dark horse in Laurie Greenland could do some damage if they had a good qualification here today. Yeah, the way that the points are structured in downhill mountain biking, you're kind of never out of the running. If you win qualifying and finals, it's 250 points. So you're right in the running. You know, if Thibaut gets a flat, we've seen that all week long. So it's definitely not over. It's never over till it's over. And it all starts today in men's qualifying. If they can get down that track the fastest, well, they put themselves on a good trajectory to take home an overall at the end of the weekend, potentially. And me and Els will be catching their thoughts at the bottom. Yeah, check, check, check. Charlie Harrison, first race back. You bloody crushed it in time practice. How is this running qualifying? <laughs> pretty good, yeah. I uh, pretty much did everything I wanted to do. Rode a little tight. I've been struggling a bit riding tight and qualifying. Um, but overall happy. There was just a few bits where like I knew that I could have been attacking just a little bit more. Um, but overall happy and uh, looking forward to racing tomorrow. <laughs> Hello. How fun is it watching your daddy do some racing? Are you having a nice time? I love him. Ah, uh, we love him too. How are you feeling announcing your retirement only the start of this weekend? How has it sunk in? Yeah, it's uh I'm enjoying it. I feel a relief actually. Wasn't sure how I'd feel once you hit send on the press release, you know. <laughs> but the message I've got is like just insane. It's overwhelming and I feel good about it. I'm enjoying my time here with the family and it's one of my favorite tracks of all time. So just a good, good place to take a step back. Racing aside, how long did it take you to do your damn hair? Luckily, I've got a, uh, a hairdresser in Morzine named Steady Eddie. And he seems to look after me and he got it done in probably an hour or so, but He's a professional, so you know he knows what he's doing. But I think people like it. I've been getting a lot of compliments here. All the Americans are quite open about saying how nice it looks. So it gives, pumps you up a little bit, which is cool. I'm enjoying it. What is it that makes this track so hard to kind of be precise? For me, what makes it really hard is like to get your bike to really grip and track. It kind of needs to be fairly soft on the suspension, but then to get it to pump and go fast, it needs to be firm. But then if you come offline looking for the grip and go through the rocks, you just bottom out everywhere into all the big rocks and lose all your speed. So it's a balance between perfect riding and just setting your bike as hard as it will go and just getting on with it. <laughs> I think I might just go hard tomorrow. <laughs> might be easier. You get the sense that the European riders aren't used to tracks like this. Does it put you on the back foot initially? Uh, not really, like the section I'm talking about is really narrow and there's no line into it and it's just like commitment and trying to be, you know, like tiny. So it's hard, like everywhere you can't really spot where you put your wheels and, but yeah, it's still fun. Like, I don't think European hate it. It's just, we suck right now, but <laughs> no, 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 it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Yeah, so I crashed after a few turns. I think it was a bit too fast uh, for, for me, you know. Uh, and then uh, it's a bit shit because I would like to mark some points and be fast, uh, you know, and take some confidence for tomorrow. But you know, it happens, and it just makes me stronger. So yeah, just I will go, I'm going for the work and will be good for tomorrow. Confidence is high. I can't stop smiling, and uh, I think that today, if I was faster than everybody tomorrow, I just have to try and replicate it. So dropping last will be something I think that's exciting for me and uh, yeah can't wait. Wow what a quality that was. I can't remember a time where the results have just been so mixed. What do you make of it? Yeah I mean the World Cup leader Thibaut de Prella crash, Greg Menard crash who never crashes in qualifying, Amari, Loris. So I think this track and the pressure of it being the last week of racing in the season is really starting to show up.
I definitely think it did. So your top three from men's qualification was Finn Isles taking top spot. The lone European, Benoit Coulange, in second and in third. It was Lucas Shaw, as you just mentioned. But of course, the big day comes tomorrow. So make sure you guys join us live on Red Bull TV, where we will have all of the action. And overall's on the line. <laughs> it's on the line. It's on the line. <laughs> but now we've just got to get to the top of this gondola.